Hello and welcome to MBKM Models. Now, what I've done to, uh, I've been through a big lot of research um, and development, or what they call R and D and engineering, to reduce the flying weight of uh, the uh, Gillows Beaver aircraft. Um, I put a bit of paint on. Um, the airframe there for videos and stuff it shows up better um it won't that it really is a really a light spray it's not going to add to the weight at all but i've got a nice little uh e-flight uh bl180 on there but i may be changing motors again i'm not sure it's whatever motor and esc combo is the right way and the right thrust and power for this model now I um, had a good look at uh, servos. Now, the, the servos that I originally used were weighing in at 22 grams, which was heavy. So I had a look at linear servos. Now, these things are what I can only describe as finicky. All right. Um, they're not the easiest thing in the world to... Um, they're, they're, they're easy enough to um, get going. But they can go wrong and I tried to fix one and it just wouldn't work all right so I had to buy another one and at 10 pounds a time they are quite expensive um, there's other websites you get them cheaper on but I bought them on Amazon and they get delivered to a locker up the road which means I haven't got to wait in and uh, as many of you will know nobody likes to wait in on deliveries do they so uh, big up for Amazon there with the locker um, other people like eBay should have lockers. That would be really cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. So I've got it hooked up on a um, on my uh, trusty uh, Pulse Two channel um, equipment, uh, which goes on to my um, oh model I'm building there, which is in other videos, which is the Revell uh, PT five seven nine five eight eight. Uh, 170 second scale which I've converted to uh, RC so um, you've got a couple of brush motors in there and we've got this uh, wonderful um, ESC that um, people couldn't um, is uh, on Amazon that people couldn't get it going but uh, I've managed to do this with the uh, experience I've picked up yeah so I've got a couple of um, 1S uh, mini star um, lipos uh, connected in series on their uh, eBay purchase. Yeah, so like I said, not e not not if they go wrong, there's sort of no going back. But they are light. They, I mean, this with this, um, you know, DIY servo board. That it's not a servo board, but it's a board that holds servos. So when is a servo board not a servo board? Yeah, um, it only it weighs in at nine grams, which it, which it is really cool. All right, okay, it reduces the weight, but I'm still trying different motors, different ESCs um, for this one. Um, somebody on uh, on one of the RC forums, they strip they've stripped out um, all the radio gear and. Um, uh, motor esc etc battery out of a toy which it retails around 50 pounds um well it's a good idea it's a very good idea it's a shame to scrap a model though isn't it but um you get the whole lot 2.4 gig um a geared brushed motor uh and esc and it's all in the right way so uh, like i said i mean that is an idea but it's a shame to scrap something um like but it, it like i mean the guy will fly it and it and it's good but like i said i've got this um ble flight 180 on here which is cool so what i'm going to do is now um as you've seen in the esc video before we're going to switch it on ES esc first Okay, have we got a green? Uh, no, we got a red light. Okay, and then when we put the, the uh, transmitter on, we should get a green light. Yep, there we go. Green light. All right, okay. And what I'm going to do is show you the linear servo. There we go. There we go. All right, and you can trim it all sorts. 
All right, you can you can trim that. Sorry about my uh, my hand coming in there. Um, you can trim that. Uh, you can uh, get it right. But there we go, and they weigh in a lot lighter. Obviously, I've got to. Um, I had to uh, cut the control rods out of the plane because they were on the old heavier servos and I've had to cut around the airframe a little bit, but that's not, that's not a problem. Okay. That is not a problem at all. Um, that can be just added in. Maybe, maybe I will put some uh, sheet balsa um, hatches on it. I don't know. I mean, when you're flying, if you have accidents and things or whatever, you need to be able to get to what's inside. So if I built this again, I would build far more hatches in it. I've got a battery box hatch there, um, but not much else. And I, I really think if you're going to uh, convert these, you've got to have access. All right. This is what I'm learning all the way through. I mean, I've built a uh, balsa this size before. Um Gillows models and it's all been rubber powered so this is my first time i have converted to rc i'm enjoying it uh it's uh there's a little bit of cost gone on where i have had to swap motors around but i've got some really great uh brushless motors here yeah for uh, other models or i may even sell them on on ebay um i won't get my money back but I'll, at least i'll get something um as you can see underneath there's the uh the plan for the beaver all right and um, most of the airframe is, is done there's there's the wings there waiting to be covered um to go on and like I said, at the moment, I mean, it, this has been going on for a couple of weeks now. I'm reducing weight. I'm reducing weight. All right. Uh, it's got a weigh in light. There we go. All right. You can see the linear server working. Linear servo working. All right. I mean, I think they're great, but they are finicky. And if they go wrong, it's 10 quid uh, down a drain, which, you know, it's not. I don't think that's cheap. Let's turn off in the order we put it on. All right, so off and off. All right, that particular servo, but I have made a video on it. All right, uh, ESC rather. I have made a video on it. If you can't get it going, um, watch my video because I managed to get it going. But I'm having real fun here converting. All right, so. Uh, if you're in the UK, you know that we had absolutely outstanding weather um a couple of a couple of weeks ago um and uh i didn't say all this because i haven't picked up the rubber membrane for it the rubber mem membrane is going to go around the gunnels okay between the gunnels and the deck all right and it hopefully will stop any uh water getting in all right but i've done a water test for this model um which uh a lot of you have enjoyed on uh, on my channel yeah um like i said so i'm waiting for continuous warmer weather that you, you down by the side of the water or if you're flying you don't want cold hands cold hands it's just no good this is real um summer month stuff uh as many of you know in the uk things don't actually warm up until the end of june at times um i remember being sat down at uh, bridport uh on the beach there with um, a thick parker coat on in june some years ago so yeah and like i said the weather doesn't turn and then it generally stays warmish right through october hopefully um hopefully this summer it will be a hot summer um and you can get out and do all these wonderful things but like i said um there is the linear servo all right okay it's cool it reduces weight if i would have bought these um around the time i was doing this i would have fitted one into here because with all these conversions uh you've got an issue overweight whether it's uh displacement or total flying weight there is an issue overweight and um you cannot have it too heavy 
all right otherwise this one brings in water and this one literally won't take off the ground the only thing i'm concerned about with this is i used a quite a thick gauge on the uh undercarriage because i wanted to reinforce it all right in case it come came down with a bump so the undercarriage is weighing heavy and i've also reinforced um the uh the struts for the undercarriage and i've put plastic card on them but that really doesn't weigh anything all right so like i said i haven't covered it yet because it's uh we haven't got to that stage it's got to be uh the right weight which is around about just over 100 grams it's got to be uh working properly all right before i put any covering on i mean there's the nose cowl there waiting to go um but like i said it, it's it's got to be right this is my first go on it i've got a uh, sc5 gillows to build after and i've got um the uh i can't remember the name of it now it's uh pre-war um u.s navy uh biplane all right so i like i said i've got those to build i mean i've been building balsa kits since the first one i ever built was in 1976 and that was a keelcraft soft with camel um then I built the Killcraft Spitfire. Then I built uh, the um, MAP Plan Service, which is now SARIC, the uh, Waco Hadrian Troop Carrying Glider. And then I built uh, another model of free flight called a Mercury Magna. Um, so I have built um, Balsa uh, aircraft uh, a few times in the past um enjoyed every one of them the um the old waco hadrian uh, that's still in the saric plan service it's uh, i remember being about 12 13 building that and it had 30 second sheet ribs on it um which was a lot of work and every one i cut out cracked and i had to restick it but i did build it did i fly it i can't remember um i had a sunday morning paper round which was for 50 pence at the time in 1977 and i used to walk from after school from my home all the way up to uh, a local model shop in bristol in uk called ken davis and buy a piece of wood a week so yeah um good old days that was um back in the 70s no internet then um my dad who was a uh, model builder from um world war ii end of world war ii onwards 1945 onwards um helped me out a bit and showed me what to do i think he showed me what to do on the Saltworth camel and then once i uh, knew what i was doing he made me the my dad made me this model board um uh, which uh, when i was about i built a couple of planes on this model board in the 70s and i've kept all of it ever since it literally is two pieces of cardboard stuck together with masking tape but it does the job it does the job and i've used it ever since there are outlines of uh previous aircraft pin marks on here i built a um yeah another model i built i built the gillows warhawk um control line model yeah um yeah going back in the noughties uh on this one and a west wings uh hawker sea fury on this one yeah um but we got the internet nowadays so you can pick up hints and tips and everything else yeah so like i said that is the linear servo all right um they're good they are good but they're finicky and if it goes wrong um it's 10 pounds a time but they are light i've got i bought some other servos which are the normal type of servo um they're weighing in uh ultra light as well they're micros and I'll, I'll do a separate video on them but um this is good like i said amazon purchase um went to amazon locker didn't have to wait in uh which is really cool 
and um, I'm pleased with it. I just hope that um, one of them doesn't break again. All right, um, I've called it a servo board because it is a board with servos on. All right, um, when is a servo board not a servo board? Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and until next time.